Hello, trail travelers and fellow GMRS enthusiasts, I suppose. Today, we have a Midland MXT 500, and these will be available to the general public sometime mid to late January. And I got my hands on one a little early, so that's nice. And I'm very excited about this. There's a lot to like about this radio. And we just go right off the top here and we can pretty much cover it all just by reading off the box, except for one thing, 50 watts. So that is the maximum allowable by law. Now I already have a 50 watt radio in the Jeep. I've got a BTEC 50X1. I've had it for uh, coming up on a year, I guess. And it's done good, but it's starting to have some problems. Uh, I had to reset it recently because so the frequencies were kind of wigging out and, and that fixed everything. So I don't know if that was a programming thing that I did or that messed it up, but it, that's back and working. But the, the on off button just, I mean, it's really awkward and it's, the, it's also the volume and it's just, it's really, really stiff. And so, I'm like, okay, I want something that's gonna be a little bit more rugged. We get things wet, we get things dirty. And the, the BTEC is a great radio, but it's just not holding up for my purposes. So this guy is going to do that. So let's talk about some of the features on here. Like I said, 50 watts, maximum allowable. You got 15 channels, eight repeater channels, 142 privacy codes, fast USB-C charging. So there's actually a USB-C port on here that you can then go and power or charge something else. That's pretty handy for us. Uh, that'll probably power our iPad or something uh, when we're on the road. So that's kind of cool. Other than when you see how I'm gonna mount this, I may or may not end up using that because it's gonna be up above us. So there's that, but still. IP66, this is the biggie right here. IP66 is its weatherproofing, I guess is the best way to put it. So at the IP66 is basically dust resistant and splash resistant. And now you can't submerge it, but it, it can take you know a rain or a splash of water or something, and it's gonna do just fine. So I think for us, that IP66 is really going to be the difference in something lasting a long time. Uh, looking at the back here, same thing, 50 watt uh, USB-C fast charging, water resistant, 15 high power GRMRS channels, eight repeater channels, split tone repeater capable, that's a biggie. Um, in the past, a lot of Midland radios could not do split tones, which is what a, a bunch of GMRS repeaters out there use. The, there's public repeaters that don't do that, but there's private repeaters for clubs and things that do require split tones. And only two models in the past have that, and it was a recent firmware update. It wasn't something that came with it. So it's very cool that Midland's putting that in here. Uh, 142 privacy codes, extreme range. Uh, you can talk to other FRS or GMRS radios. Uh, power, high, mid, and low settings, NOAA weather radio, so instant access to NOAA radio, narrow and wideband, that's a biggie. Previous Midland GMRS radios were only narrow band, and when you're trying to talk to someone who is on a wide band, there's a volume problem, so this solves that. Now, some of this we have to turn on. Uh, some of the defaults aren't perfect, so we're gonna go into the programming, and set it up and make sure everything's on wideband, on the, the right power settings, and we'll set up our repeaters. Automatic power off function. This is another cool one. So my radio system is just hardwired to the battery. So if I forget and I leave it on, it stays on. And that's been a problem a couple times. So this you can set to a number of different options. I think the longest being two hours with no activity and it'll shut itself off. 
that I think is super cool. Uh, let's see, that was power off, channel scan, yeah, keypad lock, got it, monitor mode, got it, silent operation. Um, not quite sure what silent operation does, might as well just turn it off, um, but we'll have to look into that. One year warranty, and it says right on the box, GMRS license required. So yes, to use this, you do need a GMRS license, and it's fairly easy to get. I'll put a link in the description so that you can find uh, some information very easily on that. I'll probably do a whole video on it since um, I push GMRS radios quite a bit, um, but it's fairly easy. It is $70 for 10 years, and it covers your entire family. So it's not every person having to go take a test like ham radio, there's no test involved. You just pay your 70 bucks and usually the next day you'll have your call sign, WREL 483 is mine, and you're good to go and your entire family. Now you do need to learn some etiquette about using GRMS radios, but it's, it's pretty easy to pick up. Uh, again, we may do a, a video on that since a lot of people are asking about it, but this should be a really solid unit. And let's take a quick look. I know uh, a lot of people get bored with unboxing videos, so I'm just gonna go through the basics here, which I guess I should start off with, um, who is this radio for, right? And I guess in, in one sense, it, it's for anybody who wants to have a GRMRS radio, but there's, you can't tweak this thing, you can't modify it. You, there, it's not really designed for anything like that. It's just supposed to be a good plug and play radio. Very simple controls, your menu, scan, monitor, uh, WX, lock, your USB port is over here. You got your microphone connection over here, your volume control channel over here. Pretty easy. On the back, we have our power connector. We have a PA connector of external speaker and our antenna. So should be able to get this wired up really easy because I already have everything there. I'm just gonna put in, I'm just gonna wire into our existing power. We have pretty standard Midland uh, microphone here has down and up keys on the top. That's kind of nice. Um, push to talk. That's really it. There's no display or anything on there like you see on some other radios. We have a stick on microphone holder. That's kind of handy. Now I've got a couple of them in the Jeep depending on the location. Uh, I've got one up on top. I got one over or I guess one over on the passenger side, one on the driver's side. So if I wanted to, I can just sticky another one on somewhere. Got our power cord. So I just have to tie this into positive and negative and I'm good to go. And get the little connector on it. So that's gonna be real easy. I'm just gonna cut the wires for where I'm at right now, splice them in, boom, we're gonna be up and running. Now. Here's, oh, I guess we have some miscellaneous screws and things for mounting. We have a plate for mounting it, and it comes with an antenna. So a lot of radios don't come with antennas. And, you know, for good reason, you know, because how do you know what you're going to need, right? Now I have a higher end Midland antenna already mounted. So I'm in pretty good shape there. But this is kind of a neat little package here. You have a magnetic mount. So drop this on somewhere, run your antenna. And now if you're like me and you own a Jeep JL that's made of aluminum, magnets are not gonna stick. So it comes with a steel plate with a sticky back. So you can attach that somewhere, boom. You got your antenna. You got this little shorty antenna that comes with it. Uh, this combo is actually very, very good. 
you're going to reach out, you're going to touch people, it's going to work extremely well because it's all dialed for this setup. Um, everything should just work pretty flawlessly. Uh, this is a standard connector on here, so if you want to go with a bigger antenna, get a bigger antenna and it's going to screw right on. So not going to cause you any grief in getting either this antenna or some other antenna mounted. So now all we need to do, get this mounted in the Jeep, get the power run, and then get it programmed. So that's gonna be the biggie on this one. Now, you don't need to run any software to program it. If you want to just talk to other people who have FRS or GMRS radios, this is good to go. It is not gonna cause you any problems. It is totally set up. If you want to tweak it and make things a little bit better, like switching to wideband, I'll show you how to do that. You can do that through the menu on here. You don't need to do that through the program. I'm going to set up some repeaters that require split tones, and that's gonna be much easier to do through the software. Now, unfortunately, like a lot of companies, their software only works on Windows. I'm a Mac guy, so I keep a little micro portable Windows laptop around just because of situations like this where I need to set something up and it runs on Windows. So let's go get this thing set up in the Jeep and uh, run some tests. All right, so up here is our BTEC 50X1. And this is the problem I have is just this, the stickiness of the power. Sometimes it turns on, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, it's just getting a little flaky and we have it mounted on this way of life CB bar. And now normally people mount stuff underneath, but I found when we had it there, everybody was banging their head on it when they were, when they would get in to the Jeep. So we just flipped the mount over and we're going to mount it up here. So I'm going to get this one off and we'll get the new mount installed. Now we've got it mounted up here and I, I like this, uh, even better than the BTEC because the mount for the BTEC came up higher. And when I run a sunshade during the summer, it was cutting into that. So I had to put a towel on top. This actually sits a little lower overall than the BTEC did. The screen is nice, easy to see. You got your controls over here, push the volume to turn it on and off. Your volume, changing your channels is very simple. Now, we need to get it programmed for the repeaters and uh, we should be good to go. And also I came up with a use for the USB port. Now, when we're on the trails, we run a DJI Osmo action camera up on front and we have to run a cable all the way down to keep it charged. So we're just gonna run from here out to the front to that camera, eliminating one cable that goes up and down. Now, the only other thing that I've noticed is the, the little mount right here doesn't like this standard mount over here. It just does not want to go on it. So I have another one that's down here that I'm going to try. And it, it just doesn't want to go in there. So something about this is not standard and that bothers me a little bit because i have a mount over here and a mount down here and doesn't like either one of them so i'm going to have to go with the mount that they provided now that's going to be okay because i'll just put it on here with the sticky back and i can just drop it on there so it's not going to be a big deal but it is kind of odd that this isn't as standard the other option I could do is just measure that and then cut this out to fit. But I mean, who knows what I may do in the future. So I'm going to leave the mount the way it is and I'll just put that stick on mount on there for the time being. All right. Well, we've managed to figure out how to get it all set up with our repeaters that use split tones. And 
I'm gonna walk you through doing it on the radio because for some reason my laptop is freaking out and every time I plug it in, the mouse stops working. But you can totally do everything from the radio. So first, we're gonna go into a menu and we wanna make sure that repeater is turned on. So that's an important first step, making sure repeater is turned on. Then we're gonna be on one of the repeater channels that we wanna use. I'm gonna hit menu and go to privacy. Okay, from here, I'm gonna select that and I can put in my receive tone. And I'm gonna change this to DCS, make sure that's on there. I can change which DCSS code I'm gonna use, hit it again, I'm on my transmit code, make sure I'm on DCSS, put in that code, and then I'm done. Now the interesting thing about the DCSS codes is you're not entering the DCSS code. You're entering their DSS privacy code. So in the back of the manual, you have a chart that lists the DSS code and the Midland code number for it. So when you're doing those DCSS codes, you're going to enter the code number, not the code itself. So it's a little confusing, but once you've got it, you, you kind of have it figured out. So if you're using uh, DCS 23, you're gonna enter number one. So pretty easy chart to follow. Little strange, but it gets the job done. So that's my review of the Midland MTX 500. I just finished my first conversation using our local repeaters here and it sounded fantastic. Person on the other end said it sounded fantastic and I'm a good 40 miles away from the repeater, at, at least 40 miles away. So it's in downtown Denver and I'm way up north right now and it's working great. So the signal was flawless and I'm just sitting here in my driveway I don't even have the engine running, so the radio is not even getting full power. So I really, really like this radio. It's very simple. I love the fact that you can program everything right from the menus on here. You don't really need to go into the app for anything, and it's just going to work. So if you're not going to use repeaters, you're going to have a very rugged, reliable, long-term radio. If you do use repeaters, it's going to support them. So pretty simple. I think this is going to be probably the hottest GMRS radio of the year. So, thanks for watching, everybody. This has been Kerry with Trail Traveler. Be safe out there. We'll catch you on the trails. Or, you know, if you're in Colorado, try me on uh, GMRS, W-R-E-L-483. We'll catch you later. Bye-bye.